Domestic energy production is a political hot button issue. While increasing production could create jobs and make the U.S. less reliant on other countries, this hot topic issue often raises concern for the environment. For the next five minutes, we'll discuss domestic energy policy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and joining me is Congressman Mario diaz billart Republican from Florida. Congressman, welcome to the program. Robert, thank you for having me. So this is what we know. We know that uh, gasoline is very expensive right now, roughly about $4 a mm -hmm. gallon. We know that we have a increasing dependency on foreign oil. Mm -hmm. We know, and George W. Bush said this many, many years ago, that we as Americans are addicted to oil. Mm -hmm. What is the solution? It's, it's really a multiple uh, facets that have to take place. Obviously, we have to do more in conservation, more in research, uh, more in alternative fields. But the reality, Robert, is that we're going to depend on oil for a long time still to go. You know, you're, we're not going to run automobiles on wind or on nuclear or on, uh, you know, solar. And, and so here's what I think is, frankly, frustrating me is the fact that we have such an incredible amount of domestic energy. It's available, it's there. Uh, it, and, and yet the federal government does not allow the American entrepreneur to tap into well, that well, domestic be, energy. Well, let's be specific. Are you talking about Keystone? Are you talking about Anwar? Are you talking about drilling in the Florida Everglades? I'm talking about domestic energy all the way around and also, for example, when we talk about Keystone, that's, that's a no-brainer. You know, we're talking about, do we want to get that energy, that oil? Because we're going to still have to import oil for a while, even if we, while we tap into our own revenue, our, our own energy. But do we want to import it from Hugo Chavez's Venezuela or for the Middle East, or do we want to import it from our ally, our friend, our neighbor, Canada? And so the president said, no, we're not going to do the Keystone uh, pipeline. And for the benefit of our viewers, Congressman, not to interrupt you, uh, the Keystone pipeline is a 500-mile uh, pipeline, if you will, that would start in Canada Correct. and would go all the way through certain Midwestern states. To our refineries. To our refineries, to our refineries, in, refineries. in Texas Correct. and Louisiana. Correct. And the president basically said, no, even though it's been studied to death, and there are no real reasons to not do it. There are no real environmental reasons to not do it. The states want to do it where it's going through, et cetera. So now, so what happens? That oil, however, that Canadian oil, is still going to be consumed. It's just not going to be consumed by Americans. It's going to go to China, as the, Can the Canadians have already announced. In the meantime, we're going to have to continue to import that oil, but not from Canada, from the Middle East, or from Venezuela. It's, it's, it's frankly, it defies common sense. So that's one issue, by the way, that's thousands of jobs that we lose. Number two is, we have coal, we have oil, we have natural gas, but for some reason, this administration, has declared war on our domestic energy sources. They are enamored with other ideas that may or may not pan out one day, and they spent billions and billions, of, hundreds of billions of dollars on them, and we've seen the fiascos about that. When, you know, isn't it, doesn't it make sense that if you have an energy source that's available, that's inexpensive, that's American, that creates jobs, Let's try to emphasize going after that. Well, Congressman, the administration would probably say this all sounds great, and of course we want to increase domestic uh, drilling here in this country. However, there are millions, if not tens of millions of acres that are at stake here when it comes to pristine wildlife, when it comes to birds and so forth, when it comes to building these type of, of things, i.e. a pipeline and or drilling, that would naturally upset the environment and also our ecosystem. Your response to that? My response is that nobody cares more about their environment, about their lands, than the people in the individual states. You know, the Alaskans know more about Alaska than I do or that you do or that the president does. And, you know, Alaska wants to tap into Anwar. Um, the footprint, by the way, for where they would be drilling... I'm told it's the size of Dulles Airport. It's the size of a, of, a, of, a, you know, of a large airport in an area that's, I guess, the size of, you know, South Carolina. And, and um, so it makes absolutely no sense. Now, look, we have to do so while protecting our environment. And, you know, obviously that's, 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 that's paramount. But you can do both things. Let me give you an example. Nobody has ever criticized Norway as being an environmentally, environmentally reckless country. It's one of the greenest countries in the world, but they depend on offshore oil drilling. They do it efficiently, cleanly. Nobody's ever said that, it does, that they don't do it that way. So if, if the Norwegians can do it, uh, what are, can the Americans, can we not uh, do what the Norwegians do? We can do it better than the Norwegians. Congress, we have about 10 seconds left. Very, very quickly, do you believe that uh, the prices at the pump will go down uh, come this fall? Very quickly, yes or no? Um, not unless we seriously tap into our own domestic energy sources. All right, thank you very much for joining us. And, of course, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time.